Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. English success, money, jobs, friends. Continuing with this topic, success, money, jobs, friends. With using English, with English, obviously internationally. Especially today, I want to focus on this topic of attention. As I said, I'm teaching you personal marketing. Personal marketing. Marketing is basically selling, right? Selling yourself is when you say personal marketing. You're selling yourself. This is what you do when you do a job search, right? When you, for example, a little too much light. There we go. When you send a letter and an application and a resume to a company, that's marketing. Okay, that's exactly marketing. Your resume and your letter is basically an advertisement for you, right? You're advertising yourself. Why? Because you're selling yourself to the company. And what are you trying to do? You want your the company to buy, right? What does that mean? Hire you, give you a job, pay you money, give you money. It's just exactly what a business does with the product, right? There's a business selling a product. What do they do? They advertise, they do marketing, right? They send out to possible customers, people who might want their product. You know, maybe it's a video, maybe it's an advertisement in a newspaper, or maybe it is a letter. There's, you know, people do advertising by mail. And in the advertisement, what do they do? They try to sell you, right? They try to persuade you. They try to convince you to buy their product, right? I do this with Effortless English, my courses, right? I'm marketing my VIP program because it is a fantastic training course for you it trains you to speak English fluently but much more than that teaches you to speak English powerfully and teaches you how to have this success mindset not just teaches you but trains you you actually practice you practice you get real skills and that's why you must try my VIP program for just one dollar it's a one dollar trial it's very 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 uh, low risk, just to try it at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. And this is intensive, powerful training for you. Your English will improve a lot, your speaking, and also your general success. You're just going to learn so many great things to help you. Use your English successfully. Okay? So that's marketing. I'm marketing. Just marketed to you. Right? And it's true. Right? The best marketing is true. And that's why personal marketing, when you market yourself to a company for a job or when you market your, when you're dating, okay, this is what guys and girls do when they're looking for a date, right? So as a young man, or maybe not young man, a man is attracted to a woman, he wants a date. What does he do? He has to market himself. He has to somehow convince this woman to go on a date, right? So it's basically marketing, right? There are many ways to do it. Uh, men use a lot of different ways to attract uh, women, to attract girls, you know, uh, young women, and get them to say yes, right? They're trying to get, say yes. Go to dinner with me. Go have coffee with me. Go on a date with me, right? And women do this too. The methods are maybe different, but if a woman is attracted to a man... She has her ways of marketing herself. Maybe she dresses a certain way. She behaves a certain way. She talks a certain way, again, to attract, to get attention, right? Women are very good at this when they want attention, right? When they want attention from a man, right? They, they do certain things to get attention. They know, right? In the dating world, everybody understands this kind of naturally, right? That... You've got to get attention. If, if you like somebody, 
Well, if they don't know who you are, if they never look at you, they never talk to you, you're not getting a date. You have no chance, right? You, the first thing you must do, you must get attention, right? This is why, you know, young, again, men have many, many, many ways to do this. If a, a man is attracted to a woman, he might, you know, some men, maybe they're very handsome or they're very strong and powerful. So they maybe dress a certain way and act a certain way. And they, they, they go up to the, they walk up to the girl if they're very, you know, kind of confident and they talk to her and maybe they try to, try to be funny, but they do a lot of things. So the girl notices them, right? The young woman notices them or the woman notices them. Attention. This is the very first step. It's, it's absolutely necessary. And it's the same, of course, for women. If a woman wants to get a date, get a boyfriend, get married, she needs to be noticed, right? If she's invisible, no, no, guy, no guys look at her, no guys talk to her, she's ignored completely, she has no chance. We, we all understand this, right, in dating. And we all know that, yeah, you've got to get attention somehow. You've got to do it. Well, it's it's not just dating. It's all things. This is also true for your job, for your life. The problem is that in school, especially in school, we are trained to be the same as everybody. We're trained to avoid being different, right? We don't want to get in trouble. So we're trained to just follow the rules, do the same thing everybody else is doing. Be quiet, right? Teachers do this a lot in schools at all ages. Be quiet. Sit in your chair. Be quiet. Don't be noticed. Don't get attention. So often we'll get this, this training in our mind where we're a little bit afraid to be different. We're a little bit uh, nervous to get attention, right? We kind of like, it feels comfortable to be invisible, right? It feels comfortable to be in a room. Nobody notices you. Nobody really. So it's, if you're not noticed, if you're invisible, you don't get anything good, but you also avoid bad things, right? The problem with attention, we all know that when you get attention, sometimes it's negative, right? This is true in dating. Like every young man knows this, that you try to get it. You, you, you like a girl, you like a, a woman. So you do something to get her attention. Maybe you just walk up to her and start talking and say, hey, hi, go on a date with me. I like you. <laughs> you know, maybe very direct. Okay, so that's great. You, got, you get her attention. She cannot ignore you. You're in front of her. You're talking to her very confidently. So that's a great, great thing to do. But what there's a risk, of course, right? Because... After you get that attention, if you're lucky, you get positive attention and she says, yes. Oh, yeah. She likes you. She says, yes. She wants, she'll go to dinner with you, whatever. But we also know it's also possible the attention might be negative. Maybe she says no. Maybe she rejects you. Maybe she doesn't like you. Maybe she doesn't like the way you look. Maybe she doesn't like the way you talk, the way... She says something about you she doesn't like. It's always possible. This is always possible, right? And uh, it it feels bad. We all, you know, emotionally, we all know this. It feels bad. You go, you like somebody, you you talk to them, and you're you're taking a risk. You're trying to be good and positive. You're getting that attention, but then they say no. They reject you. Ugh. It's, it's embarrassing. Uh, it feels bad, right? Uh, you walk away and you're like, uh, that sucked, <laughs> right? It feels bad. I know. It, I mean, that's human. It's human. Of course it does. And uh, this is true in um, business. If you're trying to sell something, right? You're in a business, your, your job, you're selling, you're selling a product. You'll say, um, I don't know. Let me find a pen. Here we go. All right, so I'm trying to sell you this pen. This pen is awesome. And you're, you, you try hard to sell this pen to someone, right? And you say, oh, look, this is a great pen. This is not a normal pen. Look at this thing. You could use it for self-defense. It's very strong. It you know, never will break. And you try hard. You use energy and effort to sell them. And they, you get the attention, right? 
You have their attention. You got the attention. Very tough to do. You did it. Congratulations. But you still might fail. They say, no, thank you. No, I don't want the pen. Or it's even possible they might be really rude. They might just say, go away. I don't want it. And again, it's hard. This is the hard thing about like sales jobs. People who are who do this as their job, they're just selling, selling. It's a hard job. It's a very tough job because of this, because uh, you cannot avoid failure. You cannot avoid it, right? No salesman is successful 100% or saleswoman, right? None, even the very, very, very top best ones in any company, they, they're they never successful 100%. I mean, they're, they're probably not even successful 50%. Most of the time, the, these are the top people, the very best. They still fail half the time or more. And it, it does feel bad, right? Oh, someone's, they say, no, no, I don't want it. So you tried hard and they still said no. You, you, it, it's, it's a risk. It's difficult to get that attention. And then it's still possible to fail. So this is why a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people then think, uh, I'll just be quiet. Right? A lot of people think it's easier, it, it, it's safer, feels better if I'm just quiet. No one notices me. I'll, I'll dress the same just like everybody else. I'll talk the same like everybody else. I'll act the same just like everybody else. So I, I avoid the failure. I avoid being noticed in a bad way. I, am, I avoid criticism. This is what many people think. But when you do this, when you avoid the attention, you also avoid success. You're avoiding success without the attention, right? No one will see you. No one will hear you. No one will care about you. You will not get success. So we come back again to this uh, job searching idea. If your resume, your resume, your CV, your resume, if it looks the same as everyone else's resume, probably the person, the, the boss, you know, the company, they'll get it in the mail. They'll open it. They'll look at it for about two seconds and throw it in, throw it in the garbage. It, that's it. Right. They are getting if it's a if it's a good job in a good company, they're getting hundreds, hundreds of letters and resumes for that one position. So they don't carefully look at each letter and resume very slowly. They look at it like in about just a few seconds. They look at it. If it looks the same as everybody else. Goodbye. It's in the trash. It must be different. It must get attention. Your resume must get their attention quickly. Your letter that you write to the company, right? In about, you know, two or three seconds, they must read your letter and, oh, there's something different. They, instead of being distracted, the person reading it looks at it and goes, oh, what's this? And they start reading more. There's something about it. There's something about your letter that is different that is interesting gets attention this is absolutely necessary if you're advertising for a product you have an advertisement again it needs to get attention right this is what you'll see on television tv ads they're always trying uh different crazy strange things different camera techniques sometimes they're they're yelling they're very loud other times it's quiet they're trying every trick they can to get your attention because they know when you're watching TV, what do most people do when the advertisements come, the commercials come, they just stop. They don't pay attention. They just ignore them completely. And those companies are spending millions of dollars for those advertisements. So they have to get your attention. This is so, so important. So for you in your job, in your career, when you speak English, you need to be different you need to, we say in English, you need to stand out. Stand out means you are noticed. 
you are noticeable very quickly, very quickly. So I'll give you an image. You can imagine you go to a party, you go to a business party. There's, let's say 200 people at the party. Everybody at the party is wearing a dark blue suit. The women are wearing, you know, kind of a, they're called, I don't know, like a dress suit, right? The women's version. And the men are wearing the normal dark blue suits. And then one person arrives, one person comes to the party, and they're wearing, you know, what, uh, a green shirt. Instantly noticed. Instantly. Right? You're, in fact, it, you cannot avoid it. Because everybody's eyes, right? It's blue, blue. Everybody's in blue, blue, blue. And there's one green shirt. Everybody's eyes are going to go, will go to the green shirt, to the person who's wearing the green shirt. You can't avoid it. It's automatic. This is just your brain. That's how your brain works. Everybody, all the eyes will go again and again and again, go back again and again and again to that green shirt because it's blue, blue, blue. Oh, what's that little piece of green? Blue, blue, blue. Oh, that green. That person will be noticed. They are going to get attention all night just because they're wearing a different color shirt, a different color than everyone else. It's a simple example, but it's very powerful. This is why um, when people are driving on the road, there's an accident, right? A car crash. It always creates a traffic jam. Even if it's on the side of the road, it's not blocking the cars. But why? Because everybody goes by, everyone slows down and looks at the car crash. Why? It's different. It gets attention. It's just the way our brains are. Our brains are always looking for something that's a little bit different to notice. If everything's the same, everything's normal, we can ignore it. It's easy to ignore things that are usual, that are the same. To stand out, to be different, you have to be a little unusual, a little different. If you're sending an application, a letter, a resume, you should probably, it should probably look different. Use a little bit different paper, possibly a different color of paper. Uh, the, the layout, right, how you structure it, should look different than the normal. Don't just follow a resume book and do it exactly the way everybody else is doing. It's going to get ignored. Uh, you know, in my business course, my business English course, I teach you a, a lot of techniques for this, for resumes, job searches, phone calls, interviews, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ways to be different, to be noticed. Now, of course, in general, we want to be noticed in a good way, but there's always, but it's never 100%, okay? For example, let's say you, you, you're you sending resumes, you're sending cover letters to companies and you decide you'll, you'll use kind of a, I don't know, a little a different color paper, something very simple, like you're going to use uh, yellow paper. So that will be noticed, right? So they open it up. Oh, most everybody's sending white paper or gray. Yours is yellow. It's kind of bright. It's going to be noticed. Boom, right away. They're going to, oh, what's this? A little bit different. If the resume is also good, you might get an interview. You probably will get an interview. If, if what's in the resume is also good, right? They, you get the attention. They'll start reading more. Then it's like, okay, hey, this is interesting. I'm going to call this person. However, sometimes some people will get it. They won't like it. They'll say, oh, yellow, this is weird. And maybe they'll throw it away, right? It's never 100%. You don't need 100%. You just need, you know, 50, as I said, 50% will give you huge success. Even if half the companies hate it, if the other half like it, you, you will get a huge number of interviews. That's fantastic, okay? This is the thing. You don't need to avoid failure. It's fine. You want to get attention. When you get attention, you will have success and failure both. Just get used to it and accept it. It's okay. Same thing when you speak English. When you speak English, you want to be a little different. What does that mean? I mean, like, number one, you want to use a loud voice. You want to use a nice, strong, powerful voice when you speak English. So people hear you. They notice you. 
Because very naturally, when we speak a, a foreign language, a language where we don't feel confident, we know we're making mistakes, we know maybe our pronunciation's not great, we have an accent. So what do we want to do? Naturally, we get quiet. Most people. Most people will get will just naturally talk more quietly because they have less less confidence about English. So they'll say, hi, oh, hi, how you doing? Hi, um, I'm AJ. Nice to meet you. Don't even realize it sometimes. Sometimes you don't even realize it, but you're dropping the power of your voice. It becomes weaker. And because of this, it's easy to ignore you. Right? You will not get attention. So you want to go the other direction and you want to speak with a, hi, I'm AJ Hogue. Nice to meet you. It might seem like it's too much. Some people, maybe some people won't like it. Who cares? But, but you'll get attention. People will notice you. They'll listen to you more. You'll have better in English conversations in general. You'll have longer conversations with people in general. When you use that nice, loud, strong voice, it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. You know, in, my, in all my courses, VIP course, uh, Power English, in all of them, I constantly train you when you are telling the mini stories, when you're practicing your speaking, to use a loud, strong voice. Always, always. Every time you speak English, Use a nice, loud, strong voice. You'll get more attention this way. People will listen to you more, more respect. It's just, again, it's, it's human nature. This will happen. You've got to fight against. Naturally, you want to get more quiet and kind of hide. So you've got to fight against that and do the opposite. And in business, of course, you have to do this. If you start a your own little business, or big business. You've got to be different. You've got to find a way to be different. And a lot, you know, there's all these statistics, uh, how many small businesses fail. Like in just the first few years, in like the first two years, I don't remember what it is. I think in the United States, it's something like 90%, 80. It's a huge number of small businesses fail in just a few years. They, they're gone. But it's... It, and the reason is, I think, there, there, there are many reasons, of course, but I think probably the biggest one is they, they don't try to be different. They just, they're, they're the same as everybody else. So they never get noticed. They never get attention. They never get noticed. Not enough. And so they fail. I've seen this with restaurants uh, in, in many cities where I've given this example before, but let's say there's a, a pizza, uh, somebody opens a pizza restaurant. It's a new pizza restaurant. But it's the same as every other pizza restaurant in the city. It's the same, it tastes the same. The decorations are the same inside. The prices are about the same. The service is the same. And then they fail. Well, of course, because there are already many other pizza places. So why why would why would the customers change? There's no reason to change. It's nothing new, nothing different. They never get attention. They're just ignored. So you've got to got to got to got to learn how to do personal marketing. And uh, this is not the only step. Attention is not the only step, but it's the first step, and I'd say probably it's the most difficult step. It's the most difficult step emotionally. We're afraid to get attention. Right. This is why people hate public speaking. Same reason. And it's also the most difficult because everybody else is also trying to get attention. So uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to get noticed. Public speaking is another example of this where you can improve your career in a huge way, just by doing speeches, just by going to conferences. I've, I talked about this yesterday. Just by going to local and national and international conferences and doing just little simple speeches. Just give a little presentation, maybe just to 30 people, might be 20 people, about some topic in your, you know, in your work area, something you are doing interesting. 
and don't do it just one time. Do it like, you know, several times a year, every year. Just by doing that, even if you're not a great speaker, just by doing that, you're going to improve your career a lot. You're going to get noticed. You'll make connections. Eventually, you'll start to get job offers. It's really great. Why? Why? Because most people are afraid to do it. Most people are terrified. They're afraid to stand up in front of a group of people, a room full of people they don't know, and talk about anything, right? Because when you do that, right, everybody, all the attention is suddenly on you. And that makes you feel nervous because, again, maybe some people won't like you. But if you do it, and if you, like, join Toastmasters, do Dale Carnegie course, get, you know, improve your public speaking... You don't have to be super great. You don't need to be Tony Robbins, okay? Just be good. Just be decent. If you just keep doing it again and again and again, this is going to help you so much in your job, in your career, in your hobbies, anything you want by just going and doing speeches about it at different conferences and seminars. Like I said, my friend Kenny, who's the science teacher, he uh, he built, a, he has built, a great career and that's probably his number one strategy is he just went to conferences and he gave speeches and presentations and he did it every year a year year every year a year and he did this in asia southeast asia where he lives and uh he made a lot of connections he got a lot of job offers worked at lots of great schools he's paid quite well as a teacher and now he's got his uh he's got his own business consulting and uh, he's working for this other cool company also. It's great. He's done all of this, and mostly just because he got attention by doing public speaking. Finally, <laughs> the number one way now to get attention is the internet. The internet. This is also, I'd say, the best way to do public speaking now is to do, do exactly what I'm doing right now with you, do a, I would say do, vid, you can do video and audio, but I recommend video. YouTube, BitChute, there's a lot of them now, right? TikTok, Instagram, they, they all have video, they all have live video, and you can do little short videos. You don't have to do live, you can record videos and, you know, put them on your account, or you can do live, live like I'm doing. And like I said, you can pick your platform, okay? You can do, you can just choose one, like maybe, you know, you can decide, oh, Facebook video, that's my favorite. I'm going to do Facebook videos for my uh, career, for my business. And just do, do them again and again and again, uh, where you have like a video, like I'm doing, like a video show, a video podcast. It can be short. You don't, you know, I'm, I talk a long time. I'm doing like an hour a day. You can do 10 minutes. It's okay. Right. But just talk about something interesting. Talk about your ideas. Talk about something interesting you are doing. You can talk about even you talk, be honest. You can even talk about problems you're having and ask your audience for advice. Well, ah, I'm trying to you know, have a problem with this. What should I do? And little by little, week by week, month by month, year by year, you will your audience, your attention will grow. And this is going to help you again. It's going to be a giant help to your jobs, your career, making money, and possibly you could start your own business. You can choose one like Facebook or you could do a lot. You could do a lot of them, right? You could try different ones. You could do one day you do Instagram <laughs> and another day you do YouTube and another day you do BitChute and another day you do Facebook video. Another day you could do TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I know it's kind of popular now. Uh, there are always new ones coming, right? So, so play around with these. The, what you should do is you need to think about like where is your audience? Who is your audience? This is another part of getting attention. You don't want attention from just anybody, right? It's just like if you're dating. Again, you're dating, right? We'll go back to the girl, the, the, we'll say, I keep saying girl, boy, but really I mean man, woman. So if, if you're a, uh, a young man, you want attention from 
Well, a lot of young men just want attention from from women in general, but uh, but most young men have you know a kind of a certain kinds of women they like, right? A certain age, they look they look a certain way. We say that's their type, their type, right? So most young men have a certain type of woman they're looking for. So this is in marketing. This is called targeted marketing. Okay, you're not trying to. You don't try to reach everybody. That's impossible. You don't want attention from everybody, right? So if you're a 20-year-old man and you're trying to date and find a girlfriend, you probably don't care about 50-year-old women. Probably, right? You're probably looking for young women who are around your same age, right? And you might have other important things you know that you like that you you're looking for so you always have to think about when you're doing personal marketing when you're doing a job search when you're doing anything like this when you're doing public speaking for your job and especially online if you're doing videos and a podcast or a blog you've got to think about you know what is my audience what type of people do i want to reach to connect with. So if you're an engineer, let's say you're a, uh, some kind of computer engineer. Well, you want to reach other computer engineers or you want to reach the, the managers, right? People who are the managers and owners of software companies or hardware companies and other people doing what you do. You don't care about English teachers like me, right? If you're trying, if you're an engineer, computer engineer, you're trying to get jobs doing some kind of uh, computer engineering, software programming something like that you you don't you don't want attention from english teachers like me you don't want attention from uh nurses or doctors they they can't help you they can't give you a job right you want attention from engineers or uh, software developers or software entrepreneurs right you get the idea so this is another thing when you're trying to think about you know, where to do your videos, where to have your social media. Should I do Facebook? Should I do YouTube? Should I do TikTok? You, sh you need to do research. Like, where is your audience? Right? Where is my, my audience is YouTube, BitChute, Facebook. Probably not on TikTok so much. TikTok's a little younger group. My, I, my, I'm, my audience is more you know, kind of after college. Right. So that's one reason I'm not on TikTok so much. So you need to figure out, like, you know, it depends on what you're doing. If you are in the medic, let's say you're a nurse, you're a nurse. And you want to help your career and you, maybe you want to do a show about nursing and health and whatever topics you want. Well, who do you want to reach? Again, you want to you want your audience to be other nurses, possibly doctors healthcare people in general well so which social media where are where do those people go you know where do they watch videos where do they read i don't know because i'm i'm not in that group but you can you can research or you can experiment and try uh, maybe they're on tiktok i don't know maybe they're more on facebook maybe they're on uh, youtube maybe they're on several okay but you just got to try it this will help your public speaking. When you want to improve public speaking, you need two things. Number one, you need to learn techniques, right? You need to learn the skill. You can do that by reading books or you can take a course. You can join Toastmasters. But the, the second thing you need to do, the second thing you need to do to improve public speaking, you have to do it a lot. So this is one problem with Toastmasters, for example. Uh, it's a nice group. I think it's very cheap or it's even maybe free. I think it's pretty, it's cheap. But you don't get enough practice in Toastmasters. There's not enough practice because uh, everybody can't, the, the groups are usually too big. So you're not able to do a speech every week. You should be doing a speech every day. If you really want to get good at public speaking, you should do public speaking every day. Every day. Well, how can you do that? 
you can't you can't really do it in Toastmasters. You can't really maybe in a course, probably not. You can do it online. You can do it with a camera. Okay, it's you can do it exactly what I'm doing, or you can become a teacher. <laughs> this is another good way to do it. Uh, this is one way I improve my public speaking. It helped a lot. I was a teacher in a school. Every day I had class, right? Every day I had a class with 10 people, 20 people, 30, sometimes big classes like 50 students. Not just one class, maybe two, three, four classes in one day. That's a lot of practice standing in front of people and speaking. It helped me a lot. The other thing that helped me a lot is doing what I'm doing now, the podcast, my video shows. It's easier be because you don't see the people. So you may be a little less nervous. That's good. But do it live if you can. And uh, it still helps because, again, every day you're speaking to this camera. And, of course, you're speaking to the audience that are watching you live. And... Uh, it's such great practice. Okay, so you, you you take a course. doesn't matter, Toastmasters, or just get a book like Dale Carnegie's book. And when you're doing, when you're talking to the camera, try to use some of those techniques. You will make mistakes. For In the beginning, maybe for a while, maybe a long time, you're, you will not be so good. It doesn't matter because when you're doing it every day, every day, every day, I promise, you will get better fast. You're going to improve very fast because most people don't do this. You're going to improve very fast by just constantly practicing. And it's cheap and it's free. You can just get online and you know do Facebook videos live every day or do Instagram live every day. It doesn't matter. Maybe two people watch you. That's okay. Maybe nobody watches you. You're still practicing. It's okay. Okay? So this is powerful It'll help you become much less nervous about public speaking. When you do it every day, you just you get used to it. And every day you get used to talking about a lot of different topics. You know, in general, focus about what you, you know, your uh, whatever your business is or whatever your topic is or your career or your job or your hobby. But tell stories and chat and talk about your ideas, talk about your problems every day, every day, every day. Even five minutes per day is okay. It's okay if it's short. Short's okay. In the beginning, if you feel nervous, just do it five minutes. Do it in English, though, okay? Do it in English. Do it in English because English gives you international attention. English gives you international influence. Do it in English every day, every day, every day. All right, let's get into our comments and questions. If you have a suggestion, you're watching now. If you have a suggestion, how to get attention in a powerful way, you know, how can you get attention for yourself? Or how can how can all of us, if you have some, something I didn't mention, maybe something, you, some cool idea you have tried, please share it. You can also share your questions if you like. All right, oh, Pliv just recommends Telegram. Telegram's another one. Yes, you can do vi little videos on Telegram. Um, yeah, I've done that too. Ah, ja Javo here says, can you recommend basic marketing books that you mentioned in the last shows? I'll mention a few. Okay, first of all, there's a great one called Purple Cow, which is about the topic we're talking about today. It's by a man named Seth Godin. G I think it's I-N. Okay, purple cow. You get the idea, right? Purple cow, standing out, how to get attention. That's what the book's about, right? Because if most cows are brown or black or white, so obviously if you see a purple cow, you're going to notice it, instantly notice it, right? Attention, quick, instant attention. That's a great book about that, Purple Cow. He has other good marketing books too, Seth Godin, mostly about internet and online marketing. Um, Dan Kennedy, any book by Dan Kennedy. He has a lot of books. Okay, Dan, D-A-N, Kennedy, like the old the ex-president of the United States. 
Dan Kennedy. Any book by him is really great for marketing. Dan Kennedy. For public speaking, you want uh, Dale Carnegie. He wrote. He also wrote a book. How to? Whoop, no, no S. Sorry, I made a mistake when I wrote it. Um, oh, I can pen these. That's cool. One second. I'm gonna pen this message and uh, purple cow. Just learned a new feature. Um, oh, we'll do purple cow. We'll pen purple cow. Hey, stop moving. Uh, Dale Carnegie. He has a quite famous book how to win friends and influence people but he he has a very good book about public speaking so dale carnegie's the writer and uh just put public speaking when you're searching and you'll find it it's very good oh the art of public speaking thank you matam uh that's the name of dale carnegie's book the art of public speaking Oh, cool. Ilana Khan has got another great book title, a uh, book recommendation. Related to the topic, I recommend a book by Gavin Kennedy. So different, different Kennedy. Gavin Kennedy, G-A-V-I-N. The book title is Everything is Negotiable. Practical Advice for Getting Better Deals in Life at Restaurants, Hotels. Negotiation is a good skill. That's a great... I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to write that. Everything is Negotiable. Uh, let me write that down because I'm going to read that book. That sounds really cool. This will be a great one for uh, practicing your English. <laughs> so you can <laughs> you're, go take a trip to an English speaking country and you can negotiate and get better prices for everything. Everything is negotiable is the name of the book. Thank you, Alana. Oh, cool. Anoop. Joseph says, I am Anoop from India. You're my inspiration for English. I'm listening to your videos every day. Now my English is getting better. Thank you, AJ, for your lessons. You are great. Thank you, Anoop. That's very nice. Thank you. Mosa says, do you think people nowadays are interested in learning the Arabic language? Sure. I, I think uh, Steve Kaufman over at Link is still learning Arabic, for example. Yeah, it's one of the big languages. Obviously, it's a major language. Hey, Alex, good to see you. Okay, just kind of trying to catch up on the... There's a lot of comments that I missed <laughs> while I was talking. Uh, Snapchat. Pliv also recommends Snapchat, right? There's a, there's another one. I don't know. Can you do, like... Does Snapchat do videos? I've never... I haven't really done Snapchat. There's so many of them. So you have to, again, you have to find your audience. Like what, which people are you trying to reach to get their attention? It's just like if you're doing, again, if you're doing it for dating, okay? If you're a young man, you'd want to go find the kinds of uh, uh, websites or platforms, probably dating <laughs> platforms, right? Where you would uh, reach the kind of young women or or. If you're older, then you, right? That's also another, if you're a 50 year old man, probably not trying to date 18 year olds. So again, you're going to have a different idea. You're going to try to reach different people, right? It's true in dating, it's true in business, it's true in your career and your job, even in hobbies. So this is important. You've got to know your audience and then you go where they are. Okay, let's see. Jack Hongir Rasulov says, Hi, Jay, you're an amazing person. Thank you so much. Because of you, I was able to turn everything upside down in my life. I got 7.5 on IELTS, a 
applying mostly your techniques, I changed my career. Woohoo! Yes! You rock! Nice! Thanks for sharing that. Always I get motivated when I read these great success stories. I thank you for sharing them. So congratulations. Really cool. Really cool. WhatsApp. There's another one. We need a group on WhatsApp. Yeah, I'm not on WhatsApp, but... So there are a lot of possibilities you can see, and you can get attention on all of them, right? You know, like, so it, it also depends what you're doing. So you've got to think, like, you know, people who do things that are very visual, right? Like if you're selling clothes, you make your own clothes and you're selling them. Instagram's really good for that, right? Because Instagram is uh, focused on photos and images and pictures, right? The pictures are really big and the text is very small on Instagram. So Instagram it is a good place to be when you're doing something very visual, right? Like I, I have an Instagram account. I don't use it much because what I do is not visual. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, I'm, it's English, it's language, it's, it's more audio, what I'm doing. So it's for your ears. So, you know, like my Instagram account is kind of boring because it's just pictures of me all the time. I, I like, I never know what to put on there. Like what, 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 I'm not a photographer really. I, so I, I, I kind of stop using it very much. And I'm, I'm much more focused on things where I can do video or audio talking, right? Talking to people because obviously speaking and talking and conversation that's what effortless english is about so you've got to think about whatever you do and this also you know when you're trying to choose where to which which social media to be on uh kind of what style of communication you'll do it very it really depends what you are doing right so anything if you're if you're an artist if you're doing something visual you're making jewelry anything you can do with you can show a lot of pictures then obviously Instagram would be a very good place to be for you Okay I'll just catch up on the uh, oh going they're moving fast one second sorry guys Okay, see, Matam, here's a, here's a cool thing Matam Kumar is doing. This shows dedication. Okay, it shows his uh, commitment. I go to an open stadium and I give a speech every day alone in a loud voice in English, sometimes speaking with myself and making self videos. I'm so confident to speak now. Well, that is awesome. That is really cool. So it just goes out to a stadium, like a big open area, and just uh, gives speeches outdoors uh, that's awesome good for you good you know it kind of that kind of reminds me a little in uh here in osaka you can go some places some parks sometimes under bridges all, all kinds of weird places river next to a rivers and you'll see um like two it's, it's usually two young young guys like 20 year old something like that and they're they're talking and they're doing they're performing and what it is they're a comedy team their comedy team, and they practice together, and they do it outside. They do it uh, just in these kind of, again, these like, yeah, big public areas, kind of away from people a bit, but they just go out there, and they, they're, they're doing their jokes and practicing. It's really, so yeah, you can do that. If you live in like a small apartment, you don't want to disturb your neighbors, you go out to some big open area and just give speeches in English. You could do that. But I like what you're, Matam, but that's a good way to practice. But if you want to get attention, then do do the second part that Matam talks about, making the videos and then put the videos, put the videos online. Don't be nervous if it's bad, okay? You can go back and listen to some of my like oldest, my very oldest podcasts. And yeah, I'm, there's probably a lot of bad ones in there. <laughs> okay <laughs> probably they're not not so great so what i don't care just put it all out there right in fact it's kind of cool i think it's kind of cool that if you start now you start doing videos you start doing a, a an audio podcast 
you maybe do a blog, you're, you're, you start give, you give speeches at conferences, record them when you do that, by the way. And maybe right now they're, they're not very good. It doesn't you share them anyway. And then, you know, two years later, you're still doing it. And it's kind of, you can actually see you, how, that you're improving. You can go back and you look at your old videos and then you look at your new ones and you're like, oh, I'm getting better. This is better, right? And you'll see your audience is growing. More and more people are listening to you. More and more people visiting your website or your, your social media. And uh, you're, you start to get job offers. You start getting uh, maybe invitations to do speaking. So it's kind of fun. And then, you know, after... 10 years, you're really, really good. And, and people can see, right? You can say, yeah, look at my old ones. And now look at my new ones. And everyone can see your improvement. Kind of, they see the path, right? You're not hiding it. You don't, you're not trying to pretend, oh, I was always good. Nobody's always good, okay? Every, we all start being not very good. And then we get better. So don't, don't be afraid. Don't, be, don't feel bad if you're not good now. It doesn't matter. Still do it. Just do it anyway. You'll get better. I promise you will improve. Yeah, this is cool. Olga says, uh, oops, I just lost the comment. Here it is. Olga says, a good way of practicing your English is describing everything you do during the day. It helps me a lot. You could do that. That's, an, that's a very simple. It's kind of like a spoken diary where, again, I recommend record it and put it on YouTube or put it put it somewhere online. So and do it live if you really want a challenge. Do it live and do it every day. You could do this if you if you're not if you don't care about jobs, career, money, business, hobbies. If you don't care about that stuff, you're just doing this for like maybe social connections, just improve your English, just something personal. Then just do that. It's like a personal you call it a personal web log, right? or personal video log. It's just like a diary. And you just, every day, you do a video and you talk about what you did that day. What did you do? You tell little stories about what you did that day, something you learned that day, people that you met, maybe what you hope to do, your goals, your ideas, anything. Just talk. Just talk. And then do it again the next day. The next day, do it every day if you can. Do it as often as you can. Of course, you'll get busy a few some days, but do your best. And this will help your English. And again, you might get an audience. If you're interesting, you know, eventually, even just talking about your normal day, if you do it in a kind of a fun way, an interesting way, you learn how to tell stories, you will start to attract. Eventually, people will find you that share your interests, that like you, your personality. And you might make a lot of friends all around the world just by doing something simple like that. That would be great. You can just, that's a very simple thing you can start doing. Ah, okay, here's, is it Behipa says, Hi, I'm a psychologist from Moscow. I know your course, I have known your course for a long time. Your approach is amazing. Thank you so much using your fabulous stories for my English speaking clients. Oh, that's awesome. Great. Good for you. Nice. So using English professionally, that's really great. Brahim says, thank you, AJ. The listening and speaking challenges helped me a lot. Now I feel that I've made a big improvement with my English. I can speak on uh, oh, Halo applications to native English speakers. Very nice. Checking the time. Excellent, excellent. See, it works, guys. Okay, here's a question. What is your... Good morning, sir. What is your advice to a teenager who's a native Arabic uh, language speaker? Not just about language, about whole life. Teenager. Um... Well, it's hard. I don't know, you know, like what you personally and what you're interested in, but I would say basically the main, probably the general advice I give to most teenagers would be don't only focus on school. Don't only focus on studies. Okay. You've got to, 
get out and, and, and live life. You've got to try things. Do real projects. Start a business if you're interested in business. If you're interested in travel, take some trips if you can. Depends on how old you are. Maybe you can get, convince your family to do it with you. Um, you know, start, start living. Start doing things now. Right? The, start thinking about what kind of things might do you maybe want to do as an adult. And try to start doing them now and learning about them now, not just what you're being told in school. Like if you're interested, if you want to be a computer programmer, you're probably not going to learn that in high school. So teach yourself from, you know, find online uh, programming uh, courses and videos and get books about that and teach yourself to do it and start writing programs. Start writing code now. You'll, you'll be so you'll be far ahead of everybody else right by the time you are 18 you're gonna be far ahead of all the other 18 year olds because you didn't wait right and it doesn't matter it can be any whatever your topic is if you're interested in psychology you want to be a psychologist start learning about it now start reading about it now start learning about all different psychological you know counseling methods and start studying psychology yourself you, you can't do it as a job, right? Because there are rules about that. But you can learn a lot about it independently right now as a teenager. So again, when you're 18 or when you graduate from college, when you're 20, you know, 21, 22, you'll be so far ahead of everybody else. Don't wait to live. I think that's the big main problem that a lot of teenagers have. I had the same problem is that you feel like you're stuck in school and you're just kind of waiting to start your life. Don't wait. Start it now. All right, a couple more and then time to go. Double here says, what's your opinion about the book Think Like a Champion by Donald Trump? I haven't read that one. I've read the, I think it's called Think Big. Is a, is a really good one by him. Think big. Uh, I think like a champion, I'll have to check that one out. Sounds good. His books are very good. Oh, here's Vladislav. Good to see you, Vladislav. Says, I think that to blog... I'm trying to think what to blog about. I have ideas about math, physics, astronomy. Trying to popularize. I still don't know what to start with, but the most difficult thing is to start, I guess. Those are all connected to each other, so I think you could write about all of them in your blog. You know, astronomy. I mean, you could argue that astronomy is a part of physics. You know, astrophysics, certainly. And... Uh, of course, math is used w within physics and astronomy both. So they're all very closely connected. Uh, there's really no astronomy without physics, right? There's not, And it's hard to do physics without math. So I think you could just write about uh, all three of them. You know, so I, I think that would be fine. Just whatever. The key thing is write about what you are interested in. If you're really interested and excited about it, then you can make it exciting for other people too and interesting for others. Hey, Julia Taquita. Good to see you. Greetings from Brazil. Greetings to you. Good to see you. All right, I'm just going to get a couple more. Ah, okay, here's a good, very practical question. Alex Tyson says, great show today, AJ. What is your suggestion for recording tools for starting a video blog? Ah, uh -huh. okay, good. Um, okay, for, it depends on which thing you're do, using, like uh, Facebook or YouTube, you know, which channel. Some of them have kind of built in, like YouTube... The YouTube's is not great, but you can just do it straight from your computer uh, and go straight into YouTube. 
like for example, YouTube also has, you can even use your phone, right? So you can use your phone and they have an app and you can just do a live streaming straight from your, straight from the phone app. So that's, that's actually very good. And it's a simple way to get started. Just get my, my suggestion for phones is use a tripod, okay? Or something to hold the phone. Don't just, like some people do it, you know, uh, they're holding it in front of their face with their hand and it's shaky. It's okay, I guess. But if you're doing it a lot and you're really trying to do like a more serious topic, not just, hey, what's up? You're trying to actually talk about some ideas uh, for like a job or career or something like that. Then you, you want it to be stable. And the second thing I would recommend is do it sideways, right? So it's wide. Not up and down where you get that phone, that that little narrow, thin phone image, <laughs> right? That's the main problem. On, if you do streaming from a, a phone, turn it to the side, so wide. So it's a wide angle, a wide video. And then you can use the app. So like Facebook has an app where you can just stream from your phone with the phone app straight into Facebook Live. That works. Uh, Instagram does that. Um, YouTube does that. So those are three of the big main ones for video. That's an easy, easy, easy way to get started. Speak in a loud voice. The bit, the main thing with video when you're doing a, something like this is you want, you need the the audio. You need the sound to be strong. The video does not need to be perfect. It's okay if the lighting's not perfect. It's don't worry about that so much. But you people need to hear you. So that's what it, that would be step one. You're just getting started. Most people already have a phone. Download the app for the social media you're going to use and start doing your video blog, your video show. Just do it from your phone. Very cheap, very easy. Use a tripod so it's steady. Also, you know, put it at eye level, eye level, right? So like, here's my phone. You want it at this level, the same level as your eyes. Don't put it under you. Then it looks it looks like the camera's looking up at you. You look like a giant, right? <laughs> and don't put it above you. Then you look like you're small and little. You want it right at your eye level, wide view with something holding it. You can find a phone holder very, very cheaply online you know, or buy one somewhere. So start with that. Easy. Phone, no extra cost. Later, you can upgrade, okay? Uh, if you start getting an audience and maybe you get some money coming in, you get, a, you get a, some job offers, it's becoming more successful, uh, then you can start to research more technical uh, choices like, you know, this microphone I'm using. You can get, use, get some nice microphones. This is a Rode microphone, R-O-D-E. Quite nice. It's a, just a USB mic. You can even you can get more technical than this. Like my my setup here is pretty simple. It's it's good. I've got very good quality equipment, but uh, it's not too complicated. It's possible to get even more complicated. Like if you look at someone like Joe Rogan, his podcast, you know, he's got several microphones that are going into a mixing board, and you know, it's pretty fairly complicated. Most of us don't need that. Start with a phone. From there, you could just get a nice webcam, right? Like just a decent webcam with a nice, uh, with, that has its own microphone. You just, it's just USB. You plug it into your laptop or your computer. That would be maybe the next level, like level two. And then level three would be kind of a, like a, a, a separate camera. This is what I do. A separate professional camera that you plug into your computer and maybe some software to connect everything. That would be level three. And level four would be like Joe Rogan would be very professional. It's really, I can't give you advice about that because it's, uh, you just have to research it and try it. But start at level one. There's no need to do anything expensive in the beginning. Just use your phone. I think that's we're going to end there. That's it with a nice practical question. All right. So again, you know, we're continuing today with the the topic of getting attention, and if, with your English, with your job and your career, with dating, with anything in life. Okay, you've got to stand out. You've got to be different. And when you do that, yes, sometimes 
you'll fail. Sometimes you'll be rejected, and sometimes you will be criticized. This is part of it. This is part of the game. You have to do it because the other side is sometimes you'll get accepted. Sometimes you'll be noticed, and you'll get opportunities. You'll get offers. You'll get people who love you. You will. Definitely you will. Okay? So don't be afraid of getting that attention. You've got to be different. You've got to stand out in one or more ways. You've got to take the chance. Start your video podcast. Okay? Just start doing it. Don't be afraid. Use your phone. And, uh, you know, you can dr maybe dress in a different way, make your resume look a little different. You just got to start getting attention, thinking of ways to get attention from the type of people you want, right? From the type of people that need to notice you. All right, don't be afraid, okay? You're going to have great success, I promise you. It's gonna, it will work. Lots of love to you all. Mwah. I'll see you next time, hopefully tom uh, tomorrow. I got jujitsu. Yeah, I think I can do a show tomorrow still. I'll try. All right. As always, join my VIP program. Try it for just a dollar. A dollar only to try it. Come on. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Training in English fluency. Training in success. Training in your mindset. Training strategies. See you next time.